How you guys and gals doing? How's WMMR DB Rockford doing, baby? It is the Hollywood and Mike show, or all I, you know, the way I call it, Hollywood and Peg Leg show. You know, maybe I'm just jealous because he got a third wheel going on there, man, making his uh, old lady happy and stuff like that. I don't know, man. On the Madhouse the other day, I was asking uh, China Dow. I, I think he should get one of them OnlyFans pages, man, because there's a lot of weirdos out there that like peg legs and stuff. Uh, but uh, we got a great show coming up today. Hopefully you guys are enjoying 24-7 Rock, baby. Uh, we got a uh, special guest, Flex Boy, and she's from the Guardian of the Children. And we also got Classic, and we got BD as a special guest and don't worry, we're on time, aren't we? And it won't take 30 minutes to get to the point today. Uh, but I'm going to bring in my co-host, Peg Leg himself, Mike Ball. What's, What's going up, on, man? everyone? We're, we're out. We're, we're here and we're enjoying ourselves. You know what I mean? There's, I mean, I'm excited for this episode, really. This, is, this has been an interesting uh, dynamic of us and our shows. And I think this is something that is going to be... Uh, I love bringing good things and good light to the culture. Rock and roll right there, man. Uh, especially guardians of the children. We have uh, been having a lot of good guests lately uh, as far as helping out the culture is concerned. That's right. And time, this is one of the biggest, but uh, I am kind of worried, man. I am. I'm kind of worried here that you said you were getting all excited and stuff. Do I have to worry about your camera getting white? What? Well, I do have multiple legs, you know. No, you're peg leg, dude. And I, you know what? I have always asked if you use that thing. Well, I'm so going to explain. Hold on, hold on. This oh, right here is the sexy leg, okay? This is the meat leg, human leg, that's, you know what I mean? That's so human and that's the terminator leg. Okay, no, no, that's we, leg sexy away. leg. But yeah, anyways. So uh, the, uh, how does your wife like that thing, man? Oh, it's a turn on. What are you talking about? Oh, you know what? One of these days, I'm gonna have to get her in. I'm gonna no, have to. Get she ain't gonna do it. She she won't even get in. She's barely will get into a, like a normal video. You know what I mean? She's, right. She's just camera shy. She just won't do it. Well, I'll put she's her on the tell. radio, man. You don't have to be seen on the radio. Yeah, she won't do it. Everybody says I had a great, uh, you know, looking radio face. You don't have. Yeah, to Yeah, right, it. right, exactly. Good looking I'm, radio face. That's right. I'm full of Hollywoodisms and everything, man. No, you really are. You got and so, and you know what? You kind of rub off on me sometimes because I get these Hollywoodisms too. So, well, Yikes. you know what? The definition of fuck up is me. So, <laughs> what do you expect? The apple That's doesn't fall far from the tree. Yeah. No, it don't, man. You know, and then you got Black Dragon out there. That's uh, like you know, hey, dude, turn your mic down. Hey, you know why I keep messing with the mic, dude? <laughs> you know, it, it's hard with him sometimes, you know, you know, yeah, that's we, right. you know what me and BD has been doing this for like seven years now and love him to death, even though I pick on him all the time. And he's just a good guy, good, kind of hearted guy. And uh, not like the other ones, they're pricks, but uh, it is what it is. It it's is hard to come by, you know what I mean? Especially in, in, in any type of social media setting, it's hard to find the real ones. So. It is. It is. Now, as far as bringing the good to the scene, uh, have you done your research on the Guardians of the Children? A little bit. A little bit. I, it's not like I'm going to sit here and claim that I know everything about I do not. Um, I do know that they are actually quite uh, bigger than I thought. Um, when basically I, I, what he just said there is he didn't do shit, but go ahead. No, no. I looked at their website and I did check it out and it's, it looks like an amazing organization and I would rather them speak on their organization rather than me speak on it. But it is something that I truly believe that it is life-changing and with the amount of, also the amount of people that, that, that they're moving, I, you can definitely see on their website what they're about. I can just One say thing that. that I really uh, liked about them is kind of, uh, you know, it is a special time to have the guest on because me and China Dow did that uh, 
segment on the uh, feds busting them 200 sex traffickers. Or no, not busted them. My fault. Another Hollywoodism. But they rescued 259 of those were kids. Mm -hmm. And this world is sick and it's demented. And it's great to have people out there that are actually helping these kids out. You know, a lot of times I think they lose their innocence. These it, kids. It, it's just stolen from them, you know, um, and it's it's hard. It's really heart wrenching, you know, to, to know that a child is going to go through something after something so traumatic, you know, and how they might deal with it. And is there a way to prevent these things in the future? And um, I think these people that we're going to be talking to are are part of the solution. Rock and roll, man. We're going to bring on Classic and Flex. They are with the Guardians of the Children. Uh, good people here. Uh, how you guys in uh, Gail doing, man? You know That's what? Right. She don't. You know what? I need to get Flex on the Madhouse, man. I can have all kinds of fun with her. There but, you go. <laughs> you know, as long as I can cuss, I'm good. Oh, yeah, you can cuss. <laughs> uh, but we're going to start with Classic, and he is the ranking uh, officer from uh, this panel right now, so he can give us the rundown on what the Guardian and the Children do and all that good stuff. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm, I'm blessed to be part of this organization that uh, watches out for children. That's, that's the, the main thing. And uh, uh, I will say that uh, I'm... Uh, Every day that I, I think back of our membership and the people we have throughout the United States and Canada that uh, are willing to put their lives on on hold and change their whole lifestyle to protect and watch over children. And uh, keep in mind, we when we say children, we're talking about your children, your children's children, anybody's children, because uh, they're all very special to us. It doesn't matter who they are, you know. And, and I, I sit back and I'm able to see that and it just uh, blows me away sometimes. I keep coming back. You said a couple of things earlier that uh, it hit home. And, and we, we live in a broken world. We live in a, in a sick world where uh, where children are used as pawns and as money makers. And uh, that's something that uh, we, we stand firmly against. And uh, believe me, our folks will say something and do something if they have to to protect that child. They won't just... Uh, sit in the background and say somebody should do something. Uh, we are that somebody. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what that that's a great introduction to your organization. Like I said, I've heard of you back Baca and uh, also Bikers Against uh, Predators, and you guys and gals are the meat of how bikers really do help the kids. And by the way, everybody, Chase, I seen you, but I'm not broadcasting on YouTube, my channel anyway. You're uh, probably on Mike's or Black Dragons. But uh, Flex, let's hear about you. So I'm part of the Sun City chapter. I've been a member for about four years. And Guardians of the Children is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We're an MO, as Classic said behind the scenes earlier. What brought me into the organization was I came in at a little bit of a different angle. So... After I had my second daughter, I have two daughters, I had a lot of postpartum anxiety and I would watch videos or they would just show up on Facebook about kids being abused. I couldn't sleep for weeks and I read a quote and it says, you know, if you, you know, complaining without action is called whining. So I was like, well, what can I do? The only child advocacy group I had heard of at the time was CPS. So I made a cold call to CPS. I said, hey, I don't know who I need to talk to or what I need to do, but how can I help? So I started volunteering with them. And then at all of the events that I would go to, there was these bikers, these scary looking bikers, because at the time I had, you know, I, I'd never even been near a motorcycle and they were at all of these events. And so finally, one of them that I, I, I had known before, he's like, well, come to a meeting. So I go to a meeting. I kid you not. And I hope I don't offend anyone. I didn't know what a patch was. I didn't. I was like, why are they all wearing these black vests? It's hot outside. And so, you know, I was very new to the motorcycle community. So I came in as a child advocate and became mm -hmm. a motorcycle. You know, I, I, I actually got a motorcycle for the organization. Not that you need one for it, but I know that if you had one, you could be closer to the kids, you know, work more one-on-one -on -one with them. And 
I, I mean, I got to tell you, I, I know on your show, you talk a lot about the brotherhood, the sisterhood, whatever you, whatever you, you know, you call it. And I didn't know really what that was until I joined this organization. And we are part of, you know, the biker community in El Paso. It's very active. It's very great. And the way everyone just comes together for kids. When you go up to the front of the, of the meeting and you're like, hey, you know, we're Gardens of the Children. You know, everyone knows who we are. And we ask for, for this or that or this or that. When it comes to the kids, the bikers are just, I mean, it, it's, it's incredible. I'm like, these are, these are my people. You know, anyone that would give their life uh, you know, make this their their lifestyle for the kids. Those are the people that I need to be around. And so now it, you know, I I, I work, but Guardians of the Children is pretty much most mm -hmm. of my life. <laughs> what about you, Classic? What brought you into an organization like this? That's a really really good question. Um, everybody's got a story. Uh, mine happens to be with uh, uh, my granddaughter was sexually abused for uh, between three and five years old. And uh, <clears throat> excuse me, it took me uh, took me quite a while to uh, be able to uh, get into this uh, advocate position instead of being the, uh, uh, the position that we all talk about. You harm my child, I'll kill you. You know, one of them things. So mm -hmm. it took quite a while to be able to get there, and uh, that's what did it for me. And uh, I discovered. Uh, uh, guardians of the children and uh they were exactly what i needed at the time and uh i will tell you that it changed uh, my life uh, everything that i do now is focused around uh, working with children and helping children and making sure they're okay we got a huge problem but uh, that's that's what brought me into the organization and uh i've been uh, blessed without without measure uh, of the positions that I've had in this organization. So I've seen from very starting to uh, where we're at today. And uh, it's, it's, it's amazing that uh, people, like I mentioned earlier, that keep coming back and want to keep pursuing this after seeing some of the horrific things that we've seen. So that's, uh, that's what brought me into the organization. What keeps me in, in this organization is the, uh, the brotherhood and the, uh, the, uh, just the frank talks that we have between members and our founders and so on about, you know, what's the future? What, what are we going to do? All of our ultimate hope, and, and I'm going to say this several times, I'm sure, is that we are no longer needed. And that's my, my prayer. That's my hope. That's everything. Is someday that they say, you're no longer needed. Let's just become an RC somewhere and have some fun, you know. But uh, right. That's what that's what that's what brought me into it, and that's what keeps me into it. Is is my goal is for everybody to know where we're at, and we're watching your kids. Rock on, you guys! Uh, listen over at WMMRDB uh, Rockford. We got Flex and Classic on from Guardians of the Children, uh, great child advocacy uh, group right there. Let's get uh, to Mike before I. Uh, I'm going to ask you guys about how you deal with what you have to see those kids going through. Because Ironically, that was going to be one of the main questions that I was going to bring up is how do you, because for me, anytime, even just speaking and hearing about just hearing it, let alone seeing it and seeing it in front of you and you guys actually being there saving or seeing whatever violence or violence you're preventing from occurring how do you actually handle that like mentally seeing that that's got to be very difficult for not only yourselves but for every member that you guys have well i'll tell you from what i've seen in my chapter everyone that's joined either has a story like classic where someone close to them was abused and you know you just have i've thankfully that wasn't my situation um, I was, I was abused when I was little. And I say, thankfully, because I can handle it being done to myself. I don't think I could handle it being done to my girls. And so the way I personally deal with it is, you know, we don't really have therapists or anything for the organization. I mean, we do have, uh, you know, our president, he's a social worker. So I know if anyone wanted to talk to him, they could, we have a chaplain in our group. His name is, is doc. So if anyone wanted to talk to them, they could, but I, 
what used to be my weakness, which was, you know, going back to the trauma and 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 kind of losing control with it, I've learned to harness it. So when I'm talking to a child that it maybe was in a similar situation as mine, when you have to go to court and you have to hear mm -hmm. a young child testify, look the person in the eye, you know, or be be there. Because what a lot of people don't know is family and friends are not allowed to go into the court when a three-year-old, five-year-old, 10-year-old is going to testify, which is partly why we were created. We build that repertoire with the wow. family, with the child. So when they have to go into the court, we're in there. They don't have to look at them. They just look at us and know that they're not alone. And so when we have to hear these stories, I just think, I I feel like I've triumphed. I, I have, be, I was never, I don't consider myself a victim. I consider myself a survivor. And I think this happened to me for a reason. There's a, a quote I heard, it says, don't let your pain go to waste. So what am I gonna do with what was done to me when I was so young for so long? Am I gonna, you know, there's, you know, there's two types of people in the world. This was done to me, so I'm going to do it to you. And the, there's the other person that this is done to me, so I'm going to make sure no one, it doesn't happen to anyone else. So unfortunately, of course, the kids we deal with, it's it's happened to them. Mm -hmm. So I give them tips of, of you know, what maybe how I got through it. Um, I I I have kind of like a, a bond, you know, as as unfortunate as that bond is, that bond can actually help me with uh, speaking to a child that's gone through something similar. And honestly, as far as my mental health, I, uh, this may sound like a weird thing to say, but I don't think I ever want to be 100% mentally healthy or normal because that pain that I can now channel, that it's not just taking over me anymore, I harness it and I use it either, you know, at the gym, which is why my name is Lex, or for the kids. You know, that's amazing. I can totally see what you mean is you channeling all of that good, that energy that you was bad and you're turning it into good, which is absolutely amazing. Um, and like you said, uh, I, I, it would be hard to have like, you know, therapists on board, like right away to just like sit there and talk with, but that is very cool that your president is a social worker, you know, so you can, you guys can kind of talk, you know, stuff out like that. Um, you know, and out of curious a curiosity, classic. I know that you've been around the block uh, regarding this. I, the same question to you, sir. That is uh, a very difficult thing to do. Uh, is to see and hear things that we, as parents, grandparents, uncles, aunts, moms, and dads, should never have to see or hear. And it's really hard to see uh, your members, people that you consider your brothers and sisters, uh, breaking down. And it happens. It does happen. Uh, we've had many, many times sit and talk to them. This is why the, the word brother means so much to us. We are a brother's keeper here. And if you see that they're struggling, we do pull them aside. We may not be certified therapists, but we pull them aside, say, hey, man, I, I get it, you know. Uh, right. Many times we have to send people home. You know, you need to go home. Uh, I'll, I'll call you in a little while, or we need, we'll meet somewhere, or whatever, because they're they're dealing with these things, and, and it is hard. Uh, I, I've taken it as a personal mission to, uh, and many times, the way too many times I've been in court with these people and seen things that I sit with the dads and the grandpas. Many times I'll sit with them, and uh, when they're finally allowed into the courtroom, and, and I'll tell them, I know what you're thinking. And uh, I've shared this story with Flex, and I tell him I understand totally what you're thinking. I can get to that guy before that guard gets to me, and I can do this, and I can do this, this. And they look at you shocked, and they don't realize that we all think that way. But uh, there's no greater justice than to hear those handcuffs go on these monsters, if you will, because there has to be something physically wrong with you mentally wrong with you to want to harm a child that's right so it, it is hard seeing that you know going through this uh i have my own things that i have to do to keep myself in check to make sure they're okay and the main thing i do is uh uh i have a uh a challenge coin that i have to <coughs> excuse me that i have to handle when, when it's when it gets bad just to remind myself what are you doing here why are you here and uh, it keeps me keeps me as level headed as I can be uh, during those situations when I need to be. Uh, I many many times had to pull one of our members out off, outside and tell him I get it. Uh, I have seen some extremely uh, 
tough men and women. I'm talking about a 300 pound hardened biker breakdown. So, uh, wow. you know, we, we've sat and talked about it and said, look, you know, we're in an evil world. We live in an evil world. Mm-hmm. We do the best we can. But uh, I will say that we've been 100% successful with, with, with our brothers and sisters when these kind of uh, breakdowns happen and uh, in being able to move forward. And, Absolutely. Uh, move you know, um, I call them our little victories. I tell people all the time, look for the little victories. It's not always in court because our court system is broken. Bad. That's right. Mm-hmm. Bad. But our little victories is, is when a child is terrified of a, for instance, a tall ball head guy, because that's the guy that hurt her, a tall ball head guy, to see him all of a sudden running and jumping on one of the biggest, tallest, baldest guy in the chapter in this organization. That is my little victory. So that's what I ask people to shoot for uh, in every chapter. Look for the little victory that we can get. And we do. And that keeps us sane and able to come back tomorrow. We're going to do a station identification break, and Black Dragon's going to be brought in. Uh, this is the Hollywood and Mike show with special guest Flex, and uh, we got classic from Guardians of the Troll. You're Show. listening to Motorcycle Madhouse Radio, WMMRDB Rockford. We got Black Dragon coming in. I know you are chomping at the bit to ask some questions here. It is Black Dragon from Black Dragon Biker TV, man. Uh, He is a fellow channel in the Biker News Association. Uh, What is up, BB? And go, man. Get out of the gate. First of all, thanks for having me, man. It's uh, good to see you and Mike Ball. And Classic and Flex, man, uh, just so uh, in great admiration of what you guys do. Uh, classic, uh, you're the national ambassador over there. How long have you, have you been that? And are you part of the, uh, of the, um, I, I'm actually part of the, uh, the, the, uh, originators of the club. No, I, I, I'm, I'm actually the international ambassador. I'm also responsible for Canada. So, uh, I'm an international ambassador. Uh, I've been with the organization, um, since about 2012. So. Uh, so I didn't come in with the original set that, that originated and, and was founded in 2006. Uh, this organization was founded in 2006 in San Antonio, Texas, by a group of motorcyclists and bikers sat at the table and said, hey, you got to do more than what's out there today. There's a lot of great groups out there working with children, but we felt we got to do a little bit more. And that's supporting families. Uh, so let me ask you, um, what kind of training do you put your volunteers through? Because what you guys are doing, the average person is not ready to see. So what do you do for post-traumatic stress disorder and that sort of thing? You know, we, we, we believe, we firmly believe that sometimes the best training is hit the, hit the, hit the ground uh, running. And uh, we immediately immerse them. If they're the people after they've been around us for a little while, that we realize, we think that they're there for the right reason. Uh, everybody understands that there's, folks that come into organizations that are here for other reasons other than whatever the mission is. So after we feel comfortable with that person, we immediately bring them into the courtroom set, uh, settings. Uh, there's a lot of one-on-one discussions of things that have happened, how it happens, how the court system works, how it doesn't work, uh, protocols within courts, and uh, you know some of the, none of us are, well, we do have legal, uh, professional legal people on, on staff, but most of the time it's what's out there in your community every single community is different so we believe that's the best training yes we have some training we, we do but the best training the most successful training we had is mentor them with somebody who knows what they're doing and get out there and start working with these kids now on your on your website you talk about other organizations that might be uh posing as your organization is that a big problem Oh, uh, okay. because you put it on your website. What a great question. And it, it is. Uh, we had a, uh, a group in, uh, in it, mostly in Canada that happened that uh, decided they did not want to follow the uh, procedures and policies that we have and drove away from the organization. They stole our name, our patches, our everything, because that's where it started. And they started doing their own thing. And uh, it was quite a battle to get people to understand what the difference is. We're very, very cautious who comes into this organization. Believe me, we are. We do 
background checks. We do a lot of a lot of background investigating, make sure they're right there for the right reason. Why? We don't want some pedophile, some scum of the earth, say the right things and come into an organization has access have access to children. So that did happen. Uh, we got into a, a, a quite a, a, a legal battle and everything else to get that fixed. I will happily say that at this time, it appears that that is no longer an issue, but we're being very cautious, real slow. Um, they say that the, uh, the, uh, the copying someone is, what is that, the best? Uh, Form of flattery. flattery. Yes. Yeah. Well, in this case, we don't want anybody to copy what we're doing uh, with our name, especially. We're very protective of that and our reputation, which we've worked really, really hard to to uh, establish over the years. Uh, we've, we've trademarked our patches. We've trademarked a lot of our sayings to make sure that doesn't happen. But these people have done that. So, uh, uh, like I said, it, it was a it was about a two year battle to get that resolved, especially across across the border. Anytime you're we'll dealing be, with this, uh, if we'll been be, in, in the same country, we'd have solved that quick. We'll be getting to your questions for uh, the Guardians in a second, everybody. Uh, go ahead, BD. I think Flex was going to say something. I was going to go back to the question in regards to what kind of training do we get. For us mm -hmm. here at the Sun City, I'm, I'm honestly not sure if it's the same across, because every chapter does things a little bit differently. We have a one-year probationary period where everyone goes through a form of online training. So there's different modules. It goes over, you know, court etiquette. And, you know, even though we're an MO, we do also go over MC protocols, um, you know, different things, how, how to dress when you're in court, how to interact with the kids, what the different board positions are. And after that one-year probationary period, if we see that you've been to enough events, your heart is in it, like Classic said, you're in it for the right reasons. You're not just in it for the patch then you know you 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 do get your patch as long as you have access to a motorcycle of course so um that's what i wanted to add as far as what kind of training or anything we get and 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 also to go back to you know what happens how do we uh help with our mental health when we see these things after court we also have something called a debriefing where the court liaison uh he arranges where everyone or he or she arranges everyone get together away from the family after court to just kind of talk about any feelings or anything that you want to talk about afterward. So I'm, Oh God, you go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Flex. So what's it like? Okay, so you, you come at it from a fe female aspect, of course, but what's it like to be like, uh, cause you know, you're, you're a workout person, you're, you're in the gym, you, you present a powerhouse of strength. You have the tattoos and stuff. You ride with a biker club, you know, uh, so you're kind of like a superhero looking kind of, uh, 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 you know, storm or somebody. So what's that like, especially when the little girls see you? Do, do you try to resonate power and self-confidence or exactly what is your modality for uh, your modus of operandi for treating these uh, the, these girls and stuff that I'm sure want to attach to you, especially if, if you're in a courtroom with them and their family and their parents are not? Well, first of all, your checks in the mail for all those compliments. It'll be there shortly. But um, I don't come at like I'm this big, cool. You know, I like what I like. I will listen to Chevelle and Britney Spears on the same day. So when I go to them, the 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 presence that I want to give to them is that just be confident in yourself. As corny as it sounds, learn to love yourself because I've been in the position of having various forms of abuse when I was a child, which is why I joined. So when I see, especially the little girls come up to me with, you know, situations where really only a female can help them, it's really about showing them how I overcame it without talking at them, without trying to be too motherly, you know, with, um, you know, I, it, it's pretty cool because on the same page, I'll have like my pink motorcycle helmet on my bike. I have a black bike and I'll see little girls pass by it and point up at it like, oh, you know, and, and I, I, I think it's really cool that they, they do feel, I guess, empowered to see a female ride a motorcycle and and you know hang hang with the big boys but i don't try to be cool or i just I, i've always loved lifting weights it saved my life guardians of the children in a way has saved my life because uh, as as horrible as uh, things that we see and hear there's such beauty that comes from it too so that helped save my mental sanity it's actually brought me and my family closer together and so i mean I, i'm glad that i look cool 
<laughs> yeah, no, one of the things I wanted to say was uh, the, the one thing that I really like wanted to point out that you had said, Flex, was that you had basically gotten a bike to join the organization because of how you're, you had, were attached to the movement of what they were actually doing. And that's something that I think is very special um, rather than a lot of people would rather just get the patch because of the opportunity is there rather than somebody going out looking for it like you did. I've got to commend you on that. Uh, that's an amazing thing to do, um, uh, to do for the children and for, you, I mean, you're doing a service for everybody in the community, you know, and it's, it's a big deal. These, we've got to protect these children. We have to, I mean, I have children, two children and my, myself, you know, and I, I'm young myself too. And so it's a scary, very extremely scary world out there. And I've never had the luxury of being unaware. Uh, you know, I've always, like I said, when I had my second daughter, it was just, I would see videos and I couldn't sleep. I would drive to the gym in the morning and think, you know, and, and this may not be normal, but again, I don't think that anyone that joins this organization works on a level of normal when it comes to protecting kids. We literally vow to give our lives to them. But it's like, I know somewhere in this neighborhood, you know, there's a kid getting hurt. And again, what are you going to do about it? It's great for you to say there's a problem. Okay, so now what can you do? If it's just something as simple as sharing a post, sharing this video, you know, um, volunteering for an hour, donating $5, at least if everyone had that mentality of, okay, just, just one little thing, mm -hmm. if everyone had that, then there would be a lot more being, being done for, for these kids. Well, we're going to be uh, going to the question and answer segment with Mike leading it off. Uh, get your questions in for Classic and Flex right after this. The gods of rock live here. <laughs> this is where Chicago rocks. WMMR TV. Okay, Mikey, go on. We're, it's the Hollywood and Mike show. Special guest, uh, Flex and uh, Classic from the Guardians of the Children. And we got a third wheel in the house. We got BD from Black Dragon TV on here. Uh, go ahead, Mike. Questions, questions, questions. The very first one we got from Steve, Brother Steve. He says, what would uh, be their proudest moments as a Guardians of the Children? <laughs> I'll let you go first, classic. I, I was going to say have so many. So <laughs> I, there is so many problems. I'll just give you the first one that popped in my head, and there's so many. Uh, uh, we had a uh, a young lady that was absolutely terrified of life when we were doing what we call our intake. We go and visit with the family for the first time and see if the the case is going to be something we can help them with, and so on. So, that uh, actually soiled herself when she saw one of the members. And uh, just a little bit of communicating with the, the parents, we discovered that this member actually looked, and looked like her perpetrator. Big guy, Terry, you know. This case, this court case was gonna happen within a week. So we knew we had to spend a lot of time with this family, these children that week before court. We want them to know us. So they're comfortable with us. On the second visit, the second after, um, let me rephrase it, after the third visit, because we had spent the first one was the intake and the other, we had one more visit. The second visit, when they heard the motorcycles coming out, as children do, they came storming out the door. And guess of all the members that were there, and there was a way over 20, guess who that little girl ran to and jumped in there? Uh, jumped in his lap. Guess which one? So right. yeah, that was uh, an, ex an extremely proud moment for me when I actually sat back and said, "Okay, I get it. I get it. I, I understand what why why we're here. I understand what uh, how we feel, how we're supposed to be. You know, why we're supposed to be here. This was it. This that's just one of them, and there's just so many." Um, I, I'm still a firm believer, and we got to look for our little victories and, and everything. All the little victories that we have, that was a little victory. And uh, an extremely proud moment to be a guardian, to see that. I don't have just one proud moment because all of my proud moments involve seeing the kids being kids. 
but I can tell you the most recent one was it wasn't one of our little guardians. And by definition, little guardian is someone that's um, adopted. And I say this in quotations, adopted into our family. There's, you know, everyone has a different ceremony and they become a, a part of, of, of us little guardians. But sometimes we have people in the community that reach out, Hey, can you do an anti-bullying escort for my boys? And it's not, you know, as one of our members pointed out, it's not about intimidation. It's just about empowering these kids. So we met up, there was even some, you know, bikers from outside organizations. The boys sat, uh, got on two of the bikes. It was two young boys in elementary school. We rode them to the school. The mom had explained how they didn't want to tell her who was bullying them or exactly the extent of it. But when we first got there and the family was there, you can tell the boys were happy, but scared. As soon as we pulled up, admin was like, did they bring you to school today, mijo? Like, I guess maybe it was known that these boys were kind of shy. And as soon as they got off, they were fist bumping. They were smiling. And that to me, it's like, man, where were these guys when I was kids? When I was a kid. That, and that, yeah, you know, it's, it's a proud moment because yeah. you just see, you can see them change. That was a short period of time. That was in a matter of an hour. We, you know, we met them, escorted them. And then smiles on their faces, they go to school. But then when you have, like Classic said, kids that come to you super scared, they don't know what to expect. They're in these horrible situations that they didn't put themselves in. That, you know, was thrust onto them. And then we have, you know, part of being Guardians of the Children is we have events for them. So annual events, uh, personal events for birthdays and accomplishments. And then just seeing them actually enjoy themselves is my proudest moment as a Guardian. That's your, uh, what's your work moment. Yeah. But what there not everything is 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 uh peaches and cream, everything doesn't have a good ending. So what was the worst moment? What what hurt you guys the most or something where you felt the most powerless? Um without giving away too much information, and this happens a lot, unfortunately, is seeing these kids that the our our I guess our one of our main objectives, most important is accompanying them to court and hearing them and knowing they're telling the truth, knowing that they've had to go through these medical exams and forensics exams in many cases and tell their story to multiple strangers, many of them who don't believe them. And, you know, they don't want to go to school. They're wetting themselves. They're doing this and that. And then for them to have their case dropped because they didn't exactly say the words that they were, they said, you know, a year ago, two years ago. Mm -hmm. So again, flaws in our justice system. And I'm not bashing all of them. I know there's good people out there, but that for me is one of the hardest things where you know they're telling the truth and there's people telling them that they're lying for political gain or because you know they don't want to look bad or they don't want to look a certain way or you know or they're just saying that for attention i've heard that before and i'm like really they've gotten medical exams and put themselves through hell for for a, you know just for this three minute of attention in court so for me that that would be the hardest part is the justice uh system failing them Go ahead, Mike, with some more questions from the audience. The question that that um, we got here is, how are you guys different than something like BACA? Um, I know that you guys, uh, Flex, you had told me that you guys were a little bit different than uh, said other organizations. If there is anything that you guys can specifically point out, that would be really cool. I think Classic will have to help me on this one. I'm not sure. I mean, I, I've heard of, of Bikers Against Child Abuse, and I, mm -hmm. I, of course, obviously, they sound very similar. I'm not sure of their inner workings. With us, I mean, our members come from all walks of life. We're a 501c3 nonprofit. We don't do prospects. You know, we don't do prospecting or anything like that. So, Classic, uh, what, what would you say is the big difference? It, it is very similar, very similar. Uh, we just take a different approach as to uh, supporting the time we support these children because we keep them even after their court case. Uh, we keep them until they're 18 years old. And we support wow. the families because the families are just as important to these kids. Uh, keep in mind a lot of these children uh, are actually protecting their families. They don't want to say anything because they know mom and dad are going to get upset. They don't do this. So that's the position we've, we've taken. It's that that's some of the differences. There's a lot of the uh, uh, internal differences, but uh, the main things is we, we keep the family and the children mm -hmm. until they're, they're old enough. We even allow the child, once they reach 18 years old, to become a patch member of this organization because we feel they've already been through hell. They've seen hell. They've, they've lived it. So 
those are some of the differences. I say there's some uh, some administrative differences, but uh, those are just the main differences. We just keep them till they're 18, and uh, and we do support the families. Uh, we we do allow our our chapters to have a lot more uh, input on taking care of these families than. Uh, uh, we take away some of the administrative stuff on that. But other than that, BAC is a great organization, too. They really are. They, they're helping our children. So that's that's a, that's, that's a, always a plus anytime that we can oh, uh, help children, uh, whether they're a different organization or not, as long as we're focused on them, I think that's the right goal. Absolutely. Um, the one last question that I got here is, um, believe it or not, how uh, are the addressing of the emerging threat of trans grooming is the last question for you guys. If you guys do at all. I, from, from the experience I've had, we haven't directly addressed trans grooming, but I'm not sure I fully understand the question to be honest. Okay. I understand. It's more like, um, for instance, there, let's just say you had a family that you could definitely see that was, a trans family and they were, or they were, uh, even just, let's just say it, which is okay. Uh, a normal family, but for some reason they were convincing their children or whatever. And in, in saying that it's okay for them to have, you know, body changes and stuff like that at such young ages. I think that is what the question is, what they're getting at. I actually do have some experience with this recently. Um, of course I can't give too much away. There was nothing right. involved like permanent changes. Right. It was more the desire to change one's body because of certain things. And I mean, again, I'm not a therapist. I don't really know mm -hmm. the right things to say. The only thing I can say is give them ways to love themselves. It goes back. To, and I know that sounds super corny. It sounded corny, corny to me for years, but that really is how you can help get over the trauma of child abuse, sexual, physical, emotional and I give them kind of like pointers of, is, okay, if they want to to change, you know, when they're an adult, then, then that's up to them, of course. But if they, I, I would like for them to figure out if that is truly what they want or if it's just a result of what they've gone through. So learning to accept and love yourself the way you are. If you want to change again as an adult, then that's fine. But, you know, stuff like, uh, I'll tell them, you know, links for affirmations. And I don't, I don't do the whole frou-frou, you know, I'll do like CT uh, I mean, E.T. or Les Brown, you know, send them links like that. Um, tell them to repeat certain, like if there's a, a part of their body that they hate, be aware of it, catch it, and then say something of the opposite that's positive mm -hmm. is fake it till fake you make it, it basically to do you believe it. Oh, we, wow. got, uh, we got Patrick checking in uh, from Guardians of the Children, Texas. Yeah. And then re and then repeat uh, from uh, Sun City. Uh, check it in. That's uh, right. It's more, you know, that was more of a political uh, type of question. Of course. But uh, we'll let uh, if you want uh, classic, you can answer it. It's up to you, man. I will. I will put it this way: is extremely, extremely political. Um, that is something that we're all learning. This is all new to a lot of us. Mm -hmm. of, of dealing with these things. Uh, uh, the one thing that I will tell you that uh, that we encourage all of the chapters to do, and they're very, very good at this, is providing resources to people that are in these positions that uh, are dealing with this, to these families that are dealing with these things, and, and, and concerned family members and say, listen, these people are experts at this. Give them a call. Them a call and uh, work with them and a lot of times we establish personal relationships with these resources and if we're able to uh, give them cell phone numbers and things that not a lot of people couldn't do is is that the case here and sometimes it is and depending what areas every single area of this country is different every community in this country is different so in some areas it might work and some it may not but uh, the, the best thing I can say is we usually have some resources for them to reach out to to get the help they need, the professional help they need to help them deal with these things. Now, if it, it turns to an, an abuse situation, then we are the expert. Then right. we know what we can do and what we cannot do. Uh, but uh, until it reaches that point, uh, we, we do rely on our resources very heavily in every community in the U.S. and Canada. My God. 
Uh, BD, we'll give you the last question, then we'll uh, let uh, Classic and Flex uh, say their uh, last things on their mind, because I know you're going to want them on your show, so uh, we don't want to talk them to death. And then uh, we're going to go to some stuff with BD, but go ahead, man. Absolutely. So, uh, Flex, uh, you came to this without having a motorcycle at all. And like you said, you walked in the door like, hey, what's everybody doing in all this hot leather? This is ridiculous. Uh, so now that you've got your motorcycle and uh, you're mixing with the bikers and uh, you're rolling and uh, are you riding the pack now? And and what's it like? And, and what do the children think when they see uh, a hot lady coming in on the motorcycle? What's that like for us? Well, I'll ask that hot lady when I see her, but riding in the pack has been, I mean, I'm still trying to get to the point where I ride for enjoyment. Right now I'm riding with a purpose. That's how I started. That's how it is. Like I said, I've dropped all three of the bikes that I've ridden on, even a brand new Indian motorcycle when I was test driving it. Not too bad, but when I'm riding in a pack, I still get super nervous. Um, I'm, I feel accomplished afterward. And, and I do, I do take the bike out on my own, you know, seat time, seat time, seat time, like they say. And I, I don't know how the kids feel. I, I think they're more impressed by the big, scary looking bikers with the beards, you know, the typical looking biker. Cause if, if you want someone to protect you, it's going to, you know, you're probably going to go with them rather than me. If you, not that I won't protect you. I just don't look as scary, but don't let the looks fool you. That's, That's right. Mm, I'll still, you know, don't mistake my my uh, kindness for weakness, but I hope that they feel happy to see me empowered. I mean, I've never gotten a negative reaction, so that's good. <laughs> I would imagine they would find some sort of comfort with you as well, you know, and that's a big thing in that in this type of work, I'd imagine. And, and one of the, I guess, the policies we have is for the most part, we do need a male and female POC, which is called a point of contact for each child just for that, mm. that reason. And of course, it can't be a married couple. It has to be two unrelated uh, guardians. I mean, there are some exceptions, especially if the perp is a male and they don't feel comfortable around males, then there's there'll be two female point of contacts. But definitely, wow. like you said, in this type of nonprofit motorcycle organization, being a female is, is a big plus. A Absolutely. classic. Uh, we have a question from Gio. He asked... Uh, if you have a chapter in Chicago, and I'd be scared of Flex too. She's a Latina, to kick my ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, she she's a she's a pretty tough girl. Uh, don't, like she said, don't let her kindness fool you. Uh, I, I feel very confident she could uh, take care of uh, whatever she needed to. But anyway, Chicago is actually on our radar. Uh, we've had a couple of inquiries there. We always uh, we do not solicit. We wait for people to come to this organization. We want people that want to look, are looking for a way to help in, in the community and, and things like that. And Chicago's actually come up uh, a couple of times this summer. So it's on the radar right now. And if we can put together the right people to start a chapter, uh, we're gonna look very strongly at doing that. Uh, it, it does. It is a process starting a chapter, but it's a very successful process. That when the chapter is uh, stood up, uh, they're ready to go work. Rock on. How does one well, start a chapter or, or, or become a member? I'm sorry? How does one start a chapter or become a member? Well, becoming a member is uh, basically we, we, we get a lot of uh, inquiries on that and we'll refer them to the closest chapter where they live. And uh, they usually, it usually begins by starting to attend some meetings and get to know people and they get to know you to see if you're going to be a right fit. For that thing, uh, for that for this organization, starting a chapter is a little more uh, intense. It, it, it takes a lot of uh, uh, talking to the motorcycle communities in that area, talking to the agencies, in other words, the child protective agencies and uh, district attorneys' uh, offices and things like that, to find out if uh, if we're going to be able to do any good there, because it makes no sense to stand up a chapter if you're, nobody's going to accept you or want you there. Uh, and obviously working with the motorcycle communities is uh, is big because uh, it's like a saying that I say all the time that I think is important and is valid in this question is we want to play baseball. We don't have a baseball field. And uh, the motorcycle community says, yeah, you can play baseball, but these are the rules. Are you willing to play by them? And we have decisions to make at that time. Can we, can we, lift, can we do this and still meet all of our criteria within our 
organization or nonprofit status and so on, our, our constitution and bylaws and so on. So those are all decisions are made. And if, if the answer comes back, yes, then we pursue it and we move forward with that. And we right. mentor. We do a lot of mentoring on these things. And if you go to guardiansofthechildren.com, you can see where your local chapter is. So like, for example, we're Sun City, we're, at, we're El Paso, we're right next to Juarez, Mexico. So we have a lot of people that message us on our Facebook, which is our main point of contact, uh, Guardians of the Children, Sun City on Facebook. So if you're in this area and you're considering being a member, you don't need a motorcycle to join. Um, you know, if that's the case, if you don't have a bike, then you would uh, be a supporter. Um, which means you don't have, you can't get a patch, but you can still come to our functions because again, you need the background check. Um, but if you do have access to a motorcycle, you know, that's great too. Just message us if, if Sun City is your location or again, go to guardiansofthechildren.com and find where is your location and message someone from the board. The contact will be there. We appreciate having you on the show, uh, Classic and Flex. I know Black Dragon's going to get with you and uh, have you on his show uh, but great conversation uh, about this. It's a very important uh, cause. But thanks for being on the show, you, you guys and Gail. And can't thank you guys enough. S sincerely, thank you for coming on to the show. It means the world. Thank you guys for having us. Uh, this, I hope, will help us reach a lot more families and a lot more kids. That's that's the goal. And so I appreciate you guys very much. Absolutely. That's I really, right. really strongly appreciate your you're allowing us to speak of what our message because a part of our message is educating the public. And, uh, this is, uh, this is, this is a big help for us. We uh, really appreciate your time. Thanks. Uh, appreciate you having on. We're going to let you go right now. Uh, me and Mike's going to talk about this for a second or two. Then we're going to bring BD back on baby. Uh, right. I, uh, I'm sure, uh, flex to get a hold of you on Instagram. Uh, but uh, we got some more serious stuff coming up uh, after uh, this right now. The color was neon yellow. The shoes were checkered. The fanny pack was filled to the max. And this was playing on your bright yellow Walkman. Welcome to Generation Rad. WMMR. B.B. Rockford. Be before we bring BD back on, and it's something that actually broke my heart really bad. Uh, to see him go through something like this. And uh, he did a video about it. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. Uh, Mike, what do you think about the Guardians of Children, man? Guardians of the Children, man. Um, this is something that I really have been enjoying doing with you is, is putting out these uh, good light stories that I, I honestly, it's kind of just truth be told. A lot of these are not really discussed or talked about. Like I've talked about, in our segments before with this kind of stuff that we're doing. Um, this is different, you know, um, we're, it's not, if we just constantly show bad and bad and bad and bad in the community, what is the community and uh, the eventual public going to think about us? So it's, it's, I think it's really good that we do show what these uh, amazing people are doing because they are changing lives and saving lives for sure. I agree. You know, just hearing some of the stuff that they, everybody knows on the Madhouse when China Dow does the news, I I, don't, I won't allow any news. That I know. Can, I can't take it. I know. It's uh, hard for me. And that's why I had to ask that question that you asked, too. We both kind of like at the same right. time wanted to ask that question because honestly, you know how they mentioned there's been times where they needed to, you know, tell their guys to go home. You know, hey, you're I'd probably be that guy being sent home. You know what I mean? I don't know how I'd handle situations with, with like that being face to face like that. It'd, it'd be so hard. I couldn't either. Uh, you're listening to the Hollywood and Mike show right here on WMMR DB Rockford. And uh, we got uh, BD, uh, Black Dragon, uh, Biker TV coming on. And this is a very sad story. And I'm hoping the biker community, if you're listening right now, uh, if you have any information on what he is going to talk about, get your ass up and say something. Uh, this is a part of BD's family, and hopefully everybody out there that listens and watches us understands that, that uh, we're all in this community together. Let's help him out, but we're gonna, I'm going to leave uh, what happened uh 
to let uh, Black Dragon talk about it. Uh, listen, man. First of all, Hollywood, Mike, I can't thank you guys enough. I can't thank you enough for all your support and coverage over these my last seven years doing this channel. Every time I've ever had any kind of a major problem, you have uh, been there in the weeds in the background trying to help me out. Um, teaching me how to do this stuff. You taught me how to use OBS. You taught me uh, all this this stuff, the microphones, everything. And and it would have been a very steep learning curve without you. So uh, once again, I want to thank you for offering your channel up uh, for this situation that's happened with me. Uh, my extended family has uh, um, suffered through a double murder uh, of um, two sisters in the family. Um, and this happened in Memphis, Tennessee, and Mike, I'm sharing the screen now. Uh, this gotcha. happened in Memphis, Tennessee, and uh, oh, they it's don't not know. There right now. Oh, there it is. They they don't know. Uh, well, let me just play this for you guys, and and then uh, we'll go. Um, as you can imagine, uh, this is a uh, a horrible occurrence for us, um, and. We don't do this in the biker community. In the biker world, we don't do harming children, and we don't do harming women, and we don't do harming um, elder people. This is despicable and disgusting. And we have big networks among us, uh, Hollywood, and, and so that's why I'm so thankful for you sharing this. So if you know anything at all, call Crime Stoppers, Memphis, Tennessee, or you can hit me, Black Dragon, 404-692-0336, 404-692-0336. And let's put this monster or monsters away um, for good. This is, uh, uh, the, the, the details on this story are horrendous. The older sister, 71 years old, was, was bedridden. And whoever came into the home and per perpetrated this crime. If you can imagine being in the bed, unable to move or get out of the bed or even get to the phone to call the police and listening to the murder of your sister as she fought valiantly for her life, only to know that your time is coming next. What, what incredible fear, what pain, what torture, um, that that person would have to live through. And um, what we would want is to, <clears throat> in, in, I, I, you just would want to put the same torture or worse on the individual that per perpetuated this horrible crime. Um, we're not capable of doing it. Like, like, uh, like Classic said, to, to have some, one of your loved ones hurt and there's nothing you can do about it. So he joined that organization. Um, it's the same kind of feeling. So we would ask that you would please, if you know anything, if you know anyone that knows anything, if you know anyone in that area, it's a, you know, we got big reach on this thing. And we would ask that you would put your information forward. We are incensed, hurt. Um, it's incredulous. It's unbelievable. And we just need, we need that help. So uh, thank you again, Hollywood, for the platform and for all your many years of help. Thank you, Mike Ball, for the platform no, and thank for you. all your many years of support. Man, just thank both of you so much. And and uh, that's it. Thank you. I'm sorry that you're going through this, Black Dragon. That's, gosh, dang it, man. What a terrible. You know what, BD? Where is the morality anymore in this country? Where is the morality that somebody would do something like that? Uh you know, and I just, I don't know, something's crazy. I, I, I watched this thing uh, over the last two days. There was this thing on on uh, Netflix uh, about the horror of the concentration camps and what actually happened. And I never really knew. You know, we get the standard story when we're growing up. Six million Jewish people were killed. Standard story. I never knew, like, how many had died in Russia and all this stuff and just the horrible things. Uh, that were done uh, to that group of people. And and it just seems like, and then if you know about Rwanda and uh, and, and all of these, these things around the world, 
It, it is horrible what people can do each other to each other. There's no morality. There's no God dang it. You need a gun at your house. Mm-hmm. You you there's no but there's no police that can be called when somebody has decided that for whatever reason they don't like what you said or 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 I'm a I I I need a fix because I'm a drug addict or whatever they decide that makes their agenda more important to yours to the fact that they will take your life they don't care how they do it they don't care how much pain they inflict they don't care who they hurt they don't care about who they destroy down the line your children don't have somebody to grow up with. Your family doesn't have a, an aunt or, or, or mother or, or they don't care. They don't care. And so you got to be able to protect your damn self out here. And uh, I'm glad I live in the South because down here, it's a little bit different up there in Chicago and commie land where you guys live. Relax. Uh, <laughs> where, where nobody can have a gun and all this kind of business. Um, they, 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 they have rights and stuff down here uh but still if you're afraid to have protection and yeah it's like my goodness man my goodness who goes into a house and stabs a couple of old ladies to death who does that some idiot some some depraved heart depraved soul soulless individual um animals yeah you said that, you know, we as bikers and as a community, and I think we say this as humans, is obviously women, children, and the elderly, right? You named two out of the three that happened right there. You know what I mean? And how it couldn't, it's it's bad enough for it to be one, but to be two out of the three is just like, you don't even deserve hell at that point. You don't. You don't. you don't you don't you don't deserve that kind of existence and i'm sorry that there is no morals ethics and codes anymore because there isn't let's just uh face the fact uh, the the lack of human um just being alive human life is just reckless at this point no one cares it seems like it's just it's just so nonchalant to everybody it's just oh and it's just what it is what it is you well, know, you, until said it happens it, to you. you said it perfect nonchalant. A lot of people don't know how it feels until it happens to you. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it happens to everybody else until it happens to you. Now, do you got any, uh, you know, of any leads or anything like that right now? Not that the police are discussing. Now, you know, they're going to always have something they hold in reserve. They're, they're never going to tell you everything they know. So, um, some people said that they saw a tall man standing outside with a cell phone standing by their home. So, you know, the police will probably check every cell phone record uh, or something like that in the area. Uh, but that's not something they're going to tell you about. They're going to say, we have no leads. But somebody saw a, a tall man uh, standing uh, outside. In fact, uh, this story here gotta, says Memphis do Police they gotta, State. Do they got a composite sketch yet? No, I, I don't see a uh, composite switch, but they they uh, say that the women were pronounced dead on the scene, uh, and they say that the uh, investigation is ongoing, and they talk about that man. I'm looking at the, uh, the written screen here. They talk about the man that they saw, but um, they say that um, uh, they only uh, describe him as a, uh, a tall man standing outside. I don't even think they say whether he was black or white. How's the family doing right now? Is the church helping out? Uh, uh, the, 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 the the funeral yesterday. Um, everyone's doing, everyone's as, doing as well as, as could be expected. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, uh, but it's, uh, it's absolutely, absolutely terrible on the family. Because uh, who, who can believe it? I, can, I can't even imagine that. I can't. No, like nobody, nobody can believe it. You, you don't expect that. And I mean, you know, maybe one of the younger people or something like that, you might expect, you don't expect people that are in the, the, uh, uh, sunset of life, chilling out, uh, bedridden, wheelchair bound. Bedridden, yeah. What, what kind of heartless, soulless and coward you have to be to want to hurt, let alone kill an old lady that is living her last moments. Why? What's the benefit to any of that? That's this is sick, dude. 
There's, there's is, no, there is no moral. You know what? Humans are animals, man. They really are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they say they saw a doorbell standing on the side of the victim's home on a cell phone. They don't even say whether he's black or white. Um, just a tall male. So there, at that point, from what we know, there's um, no leads that they have released anyway. And so we know people know things, people see things, people hear things. And sometimes people know stuff and they just don't say anything like, ah, you know, I'm not going to talk on uh, that, nah, you know, uh, whatever the case may be. But um, these were two individuals, two people. They sang in the church. Good people. And, and they... They deserve to be respected, and they deserve justice uh, in whatever kind of way that we can get it for them. I agree. Uh, you know what? We appreciate you having on the show and stuff. Uh, make sure you stick around in the back uh, yeah. with this. <laughs> I'm speechless. Yeah, me How's too. Tia? How's Tia? Uh, <laughs> she's better now. She, You know, the... Uh, she was able to uh, to 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 bury her relatives, um, and 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 they they traveled there to Memphis to do that, and uh, she got back last night, and she was able to um, lift her head a little bit, a little bit. but you know she st still breaks up about it, still cries about it, um, but but she's moving forward with dignity in as much as she can. And uh, they've had the closure that you need, uh, but they don't. They don't have ultimate closure. Of course not. Night. And night ultimate closure, closure is yeah. going to be to watch the, uh, the the electric chair get turned on 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 the on the on the individual or individuals. Exactly. Well, we're going to be uh, giving our final thoughts, me and Mike, and uh, wow, that kind of kicks you in the nuts right yeah. there. It, yeah, does. it does. We'll be right back. We have ignition. Strap in. You're about to listen to the hottest sounds. It's the hottest mixtape in the world. And you've got it. You're listening to the Motorcycle Madhouse Radio A61354. Okay, final thoughts, Mike. And I'll actually get some final thoughts from uh, Black Dragon on the Guardians of the Children. I actually got Flex in the... Uh, the back uh, or in the green room and stuff. That way uh, we can uh, hook you guys up uh, because you're going to be uh, talking to her as well on your show. But Mikey, Mikey, yeah, Mikey these, like, this was a, uh, a really cool episode to be able to talk. I love talking to the horse's mouth, for instance. I don't like necessarily just hearing a story all the time. You know, I understand that we can't always get in touch with every single club on every single thing, but it's very special when we can have organizations or anybody come up and speak about, especially the good that they're doing. Um, like I said, these people are doing amazing things and they're changing lives. Um, it's heart wrenching to hear these stories that some of these kids have to go through and, and what they have to go through as well as guardians to protect these children. Um, I could only imagine what, you know, you have to mentally go through to get through that. I am sure that's not an easy task. And, and I, like I said as well, I don't think I could even do it. It's a very, it would be very hard. So the last, you know, few episodes that we've done Hollywood between me and the fence posts, I've even messaged you off the show just going, oh my God, this one's hit me in the gut, you know? And each each time we we talk on these particular nights, stuff like this, when we do our show together, it seems to get very heavy. And uh, we, we uh, though we're learning from a ton of these things, it hurts, but at the same time, it, it's going to bring awareness around. And uh, I think this is what we need at this point. Rock on Black Dragon, man, uh, from the Black Dragon uh, Biker TV. Over on YouTube, he's also got the, the Dragon's Lair over on Spotify and all the major podcast platforms, even though he has to get uh, that organized. But, uh, you know, it happens. BD. I love you too, Hollywood. So, uh, <laughs> I, man, I, this was such a wonderful conversation tonight. And I, I'm glad, I'm, I'm really glad your show uh, has really started to focus on the good because uh, we get beat up in the press all the time uh, about uh, the bad stuff we focus on. 
And I'm so glad to see you guys are doing this. And my channel has actually started to do this as well. I am so invigorated and turned on and, and I admire so much. Can you imagine the pain that these people have to suffer through? I talked recently to a, uh, a police officer who does child crimes. And I asked him, well, what's the worst thing you ever saw? And when he explained to me the worst thing that he ever saw, I can't even repeat it on this broadcast without we would, getting... We would get banned. Home. You would get banned, probably. Right. If I repeat what he saw, the worst thing he ever... And I said, how do you come back from that? I asked that officer. And so these people, without much training, with just love in their hearts, these people are facing what that officer is facing. But they're coming in as advocates for the children and so this has to weigh heavily on them. They have to go home at night uh, and 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 have to debri de debrief and de depressurize. They they have to be affected. They have to be changed. They have to be going through post traumatic stress disorder. She goes in that gym. She said earlier in the show in the back room, Mike. She said, uh, uh, I, I, "Lifting those weights has saved people's lives." So I haven't had to kill them. That's uh, right. So people that do this and not get a paycheck and not get a reward and not get a, uh, a, a 401k and mm -hmm. they do this because of the love in their heart or because they've been through this before, or because like he said, his own grandchild went through this. These people are special people on our planet. They're special people. And there is no way we'll ever be able to say thank you enough or ever be able to reward them enough or recognize them enough. Like you guys have done on this channel tonight. There'll be no way we can do that. And their only real reward is going to come from, maybe the one or two lives they're able to save or change. And I think they're angels and they, and, and God bless them. Well, what better way to end the show than that right there, man? Uh, this is the Hollywood and Mike show. We are on, I think we're in a, I got to talk to Mike about going on Sundays, man. I like Sundays, uh, but uh, we'll catch you later. Rock on. We'll see you tomorrow morning with China Dow on the motorcycle madhouse uh, morning show. We'll see all our Madhouse crew there. Rock out. Right, no more Harley through the night. Keep the motor tight, pillin' out, taking flights. Life on the edge is the way that Yogi likes. No fun if I can't do a hundred through the light. Probably be the only way that I can live and feel alive.